big boy action. Right, cool. I'm David, and in the past three years, I've taken my Shopify stores from zero dollars to over 150 million dollars. Today, I'm going to tell you the untold story about how I started my brands. A weighted blanket that can help you yeah. sleep. It increases. The story of the Odia is untold because honestly, I didn't like talking about myself. I'm telling it now because the team is doing such incredible things and we're about to go on this massive journey and compete against some of the biggest brands in the world. I wanted to document this journey and hopefully help some entrepreneurs become more successful and ideally live happier lives. I first got into digital marketing straight out of school. I was growth hacking Instagrams to over 600,000 followers, which um, back then was, was a lot. I learned a ton about algorithms and systems behind these social platforms and how you need to work with them. Then, like all entrepreneurs do, I probably got a little distracted and, and began failing a lot of other business ideas. Some of the products I started and failed um, include a gym clothing business, a headphone business, iPhone case business, personal training business, seasoning business. Probably my biggest and weirdest failure was my Vietnamese roll shop. I was cooking pork rolls at 6 a.m. in the morning and, and making about 50 cents a roll. I gave up on that probably a, a year in. Looking back on it now, that was probably the one that, that made me really want to quit entrepreneurship altogether. I was also trying marketing and mining engineering at university and, and just dropped out after the first semester. I actually think I, I failed marketing, which is, which is ironic. My entire life changed after I dedicated myself to upskilling and learning. I learned a holistic approach to, to marketing rather than doing hacky, permissionless marketing, which was providing no value. I did this by beginning what I guess could be called a, a single person agency. To learn how to use a camera, I would, I would shoot video ads for family businesses, I would go shoot travel videos wherever possible, I would even shoot wedding videos for, for friends of friends, I didn't even know the, the, the bride and groom. I also then um, you know, really wanted to learn how to run Facebook ads and also website development as I saw that that was really important. So I pro just approached a ton of businesses and, and shot content for them and then built their website and then just ran their ads. I did this all for free because I, I, just so I could learn the skills. A lot of people question whether they should charge when first starting out, I don't think it really matters. The main thing is you're just learning as many skills as possible. Also learn what you like and what you dislike. Learn what works and what doesn't work. If someone isn't willing to pay you money but you know you're going to learn a lot of skills you can put it on your portfolio, just do it for free. The second thing I did which really changed my path is read a lot of books. Lead Startup was probably my most impactful book. It really allowed me to understand why my businesses were failing and, and how I could make them succeed. It allowed me to learn how to test my business concepts properly before investing a lot of time and money in them. The Psychology of Persuasion by Robert Cialdini was, was also a great one for marketing. Finally, Ready, Fire, Aim was for beginners is, is great because it's going to help you understand the journey that you're about to take. I also listen to a lot of podcasts about media buying. Podcasts are a great way to learn the most updated information on, on rapidly changing topics like ad buying, opposed to books which are probably better for the fundamentals which will withstood the test of time. YouTube is also getting better for up-to-date information. Just make sure that the video was uploaded recently and the person has actually achieved what you're looking to achieve. Otherwise, their advice just might not get you where you actually want to go. Eventually, I was providing a lot of value to my clients and, and considering building an agency and hiring people. However, this decision quickly um, got made for me when I launched my first businesses. I started the Udi and Calming Blankets about three years ago now. All my brands started in such a different way back then. I think what I would suggest now is just be really vigilant when you're coming up with an idea, like looking for problems that need to be solved. So it's like Alibaba are really great to get started with to see what products are available. There's a ton of videos on how to approach sourcing on these sites, but um, I'll probably do one myself to clear up some common mistakes people make. One tip I do have is actually make build relationships with the agents, not just the manufacturer of the factories when you're starting out and trying to find new products. They'll be sending you a ton of product ideas from hundreds of different factories all week if you let them know that you're willing to sell anything. When I started the Udi, I just released them in some basic colours and was super excited to, to be in the comfort wear space. I would get my family and girlfriend to model them in, in 40 degree days. I took a ton of just terrible images and, and videos and basically just uploaded them to the, the debut like default Shopify theme. I wrote the copy myself based on some direct response marketing books just to make sure that it could convert. I then just launched some Facebook ads. 
Sales were pretty immediate. They they slowly trickled in, you know, one or two a day to begin with. I was packing orders mostly myself in a warehouse as well as, um, you know, doing all the customer service. It started to get, you know, way too much after, after about a month because I was actually juggling calming blankets as well. Um, this is when I made my first hire, who, who is actually my brother. He's still running the operations side of the business and is still so integral to it. He came on board and helped with everything. We would, um, you know, pack customers' orders and then would go and just do customer service. I still remember filling up giant rooms filled with um, Udi and Calming Blanket orders to, to send out and be picked up by Australia Post. To continue growing the brand, it was clear that we just needed to focus on four main elements. Content, Facebook ads, customer service and product development. I remember doing a big Europe trip with my friends, designing the Udi patterns each morning that, that we still sell to this day. Looking back on it now, I think the Udi is so successful because our relentless desire to make our customers happy are just as happy as possible. We've had so many chances to cut corners and we will never do it. We want the softest, funnest and warmest product in the world. A lot of people ask me why I don't drop ship my products from China and simply because our customers will just have to wait too long for their product. Sure, people can get a lower quality product at a cheaper price and probably get a crappy counterfeit version as well, but we think that people want something that's, that's extremely soft for life. I think the best thing about our company culture is how much empathy we have for customers when things don't go right, as we know we're a premium product that provides happiness, so we just need to make sure we're on the ball. One story that comes to mind is, is when Brexit happened and we had thousands of customers' orders stuck on the water and we just couldn't get them to the customer um, by Christmas as we initially promised. This actually devastated the whole office and um, since then we, we've really changed how we approach short-term profits compared to long-term customer satisfaction. You know, we always pick the customer now. At the same time as the Udi, I was actually running my other brand, Calming Blankets. Back then, it was actually our biggest brand in terms of revenue for a very long time. I actually named it Calming Blankets in hopes we could make the word synonymous with, with the name Weighted Blankets, similar to how Jacuzzi or Band-Aid have become. Honestly, it was a very similar journey to the Udi. Once you have a model that works, you can just repeat it. I used friends and family to shoot ads, then launched on Shopify and Facebook. Not to play favorites, but Calming Blankets really was my main focus for a long time because it was so rewarding in more ways than just money. It was helping a lot of people sleep and improve their quality of life. They were also amazing to help people with high sensory seeking behavior. I learned a lot about autism with launching this brand. I think one of the most rewarding things was donating a lot of our blankets to the Disabled Arts Program in, our, in my home city, Adelaide. Coming Blankets Now is transitioning into a business really designed to help people improve their sleep. The team there have some incredible products in the pipeline, which we're super excited about. One interesting brand I launched soon after launching Calming Blankets in the Udi was Australian Furniture Warehouse. Funnily enough, I actually launched this one with my mum and my dad. They have always been in the furniture game and, and you know, really knew how to get good quality product, which is probably the hardest part of it. Most people think furniture is boring, but we saw a huge opportunity by making it fun and exciting. We'd buy the best, most on-trend products in bulk and then just have big warehouse sales. We'd just open for a few hours in the weekend, which kept our staff and overhead costs low, allowing us to charge way less than our competitors. I still remember having lines of 300 plus people around the block. They'd sprint in and grab their bargains. One time we had calming blankets on sale there and like 100 people ran and, you know, stripped a whole pallet dry. And, you know, they even ripped each other's clothes um, to get to the bargains. It was kind of like having a Black Friday sale every month. Due to COVID-19, we had to really adapt due to not wanting that, those large crowds that, that was really synonymous with our brand. AFW is now becoming even more successful thanks to focusing online, which is, which is our strength. I truly believe we can take on some of the biggest players in the space and provide really amazing furniture at a fraction of their cost. The final successful brand that I'll tell the story of today is Pupnaps. I started this brand actually with my best friend about two years after the Udi. Again, similar to Calming Blankets and the Udi, we saw the opportunity to test and validate the product through Shopify and Facebook ads. When we actually gave the products to dog owners, everyone was pretty blown away at how much the dogs actually liked it. We would go to shoots with friends and the dog would just crawl up in it and just not leave the bed to finish the shoot. With this brand, again, we had the relentless desire to really make the product a high quality. There was a ton of spammy companies that were just drop shipping a really low, light quality product from China. We decided we didn't want to do that and set up 3PLs to create the best customer experience. That brand quickly went to 1 million revenue a month in just six months of launching it, which is probably our fastest growing launch. My main advice to entrepreneurs is if you have zero dollars to start, just start by learning skills. 
you can start selling those skills and just getting into the industry. The main skills which you need are direct response copywriting, basic graphic design, videography, and media buying, preferably Facebook, but really any channel's fine, providing you can make it work. The brands I've mentioned today were all pretty successful from very early on in the process compared to my failure businesses that I mentioned at the start. So you just need to learn to when to quit. Don't get addicted to an idea as it just might not work. Get addicted to the process of learning, finding out what actually works, or just get addicted to the industry itself. Test the ideas as lean as possible, determine exactly what success looks like, then stick to it. Failure is fine, I've failed a lot, but it's extremely important to find small bits of success which can then help build your understanding of what actually works. You need to be on the lookout for positive feedback loops that you can then scale. Be on the lookout for small bits of information such as a product that your friends love that you know that you can improve upon. Look at data closely and certain marketing case studies that have worked to help steer you in the right direction. Over the next few years, I really want to change the way how people launch businesses. I want to create a process that is easy, fast and risk-free. I want to develop software to do the entire process so we can do bigger ventures and invent some really cool brands. I'm actually really excited to share the behind the scenes of our teams and help invest in founders that deserve as much success as us. So if you're keen to learn more and follow our journey, subscribe and leave a comment with what you want to know. I'll see you soon. Cool.